Hi, I'm Stephen Strait, you might know me from The Expanse, and here we are, I'm about to experience zero G for the first time for real. Cool to meet you. Hi, Stephen, my pleasure. Yeah, this is incredible, this is incredible. It must be a momentous time to have a new group of astronauts graduating for the first time in, in a while, yeah? We are looking forward, you know, yeah. uh, we had the last class was 2009. Wow. Now we speak about the class 2022, a wow. couple of years since then. It's really time to bring a new generation, yeah. a new generation of Europeans who will now fly to low Earth orbit to the moon and hopefully even one day beyond. Wow, incredible. It's such a it's such a it's such an exciting and momentous time in space travel and, and going to it the is. moon. I mean, like, it's so exciting. I mean, how how do you envision space exploration for the for, for ESA in the next 10 years, or I guess it's the moon mission, yeah? Is that, is that what's the, the major kind of goal and aim? I hope you're free for the rest of the day. We have so much <laughs> things to do. But in a nutshell, we yeah. really want to have a permanent presence of European in low Earth orbit, gotcha. number one. Second, we want to go to the moon. Let's not forget that in the meantime, even five nations landed on the moon. Right. Not yet crude, right. but nevertheless, a commercial company landed on the moon. Yeah. So we Europeans, we have to now focus on the moon we are a strong partner on the Gateway. Gateway is a station who will fly around the moon. But then, of course, we want to go to the surface. We want to explore. We want to use, ultimately, the moon in order right. to go the next step. Right, right. Mars. And we have already now to prepare of what's coming after Mars. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, and I, I would assume that, you know, with with all of these different kind of infrastructure projects that are that are being planned and, and potentially built out in space, there's there's a diversity of expertise that astronauts need to have now, right? I mean, different kinds of engineers, medical doctors, things like that for people who are going to be out there for a long time. You know, ultimately, it will be a mirror of our society, like you and me. Right. Uh, in the, at the beginning, they were mainly test pilots. Right. Today, you just said we have medical doctors, we have uh, scientists, a geologist. We have, in the meantime, even I'm very proud of that, we have a para-astronaut who is training with us, yes. John McFall. Yes. I hope to see him flying soon, yeah. because that's a mirror of our society. Yeah. And this is what it is about, to allow not only a small group of privileged, high-skilled persons to explore, they are, of course, going through the frontier, right. but behind, it's our civilization who is coming behind. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's that, it's that wonderful thing about space travel where it is, a, it is a we, right? We always talk about it as, as us and we, and it's a human endeavor, and it's a European endeavor. I mean, it's all of these different countries working together for these ultimate goals. I mean, what's that been like for you in, in terms of you know, being in charge of, of exploration and envisioning what, what, what comes immediately next, even in just low Earth orbit? So first and above all, let's not forget, I'm very proud to be the director of exploration, but first and above all, we take care of spaceship Earth. Right. So the first thing I would like is also to show what are the benefits here right now on Earth for the day, daily life. Right. Then, of course, we want to go the next step. We, we are uh, explorers, Europeans, once explorer, forever explorers. Yeah. We want to go this next step. And I think it will bring a lot in terms of technological innovation, in terms of scientific excellence. It's so motivating. Yeah. And let's not forget one thing. That's the international cooperation. Because no single nation will be able to do that alone. Right. If we are serious about it, if we want to go the hard way, we really have to pull all the efforts together. Right. So it is also an element of international cooperation. And this is a big motivation for me, not only to have these marvelous people with different backgrounds right. working uh, together, yeah. but also having the different cultures coming together. Right. And in some cases, to even overcome wars here on Earth. Oh, that would know, be amazing. I mean, in, in talking about the jewel that we have here with Earth and Spaceship Earth, I know some of the most exciting things that, that ESA is doing is revolves around climate science and kind of the, you know, look, looking at the Earth from the ISS. Can you speak a little bit about that? So, first I should underline, of course, my heart is with the International Space Station, but of let's course. forget at the European Space Agency, we cover the whole spectrum of civil space activities. Right. It goes on about Earth observation, we have dedicated satellite for that. Right. It's about satellite navigation with positioning, timing, which is extremely important. 
our European system, Galileo, is the most accurate one at worldwide level. We have telecommunications. You cannot even imagine to live, to die today without any telecommunication, which is space-based. Of course. And then there is a whole technology part, the scientific missions, which go even beyond what we do right now on exploration, because from the exploration side, we think, of course, human. We right. think how we can bring the human to the next step. Course. And at the end, you do not leave spaceship Earth without the access to space. So this is a third and last dimension, transportation in yeah. space. Incredible, incredible. Uh, thank you so much for your Pleasure. time today. I